Hello, hello. Welcome back to Funcast, episode 22. Our special guest today is the one, the only, Willie Maiko. You've definitely watched his videos, and you probably subscribed to his Patreon. I know he's taught you how to do something in mycology throughout your career, and it's an honor for you to have you on the cast today, brother. Thank you so much, man. No, thank you for holding space, brother. Thank you for inviting me on. Um, it's my pleasure, man. And especially uh, when I could do, um, you know, things like this with friends and stuff, um, it just makes it that much better. You know, that's that's what it's about, bro. It's just kind of just chatting, getting getting to talk to the friends and um, you having a nice little uh, little chat, bro. So, I mean... Uh, gosh, where to begin? I know. So we'll just start with Puerto Rico. Yeah. Yeah. How's so, that going, man? Yeah, it's, it's amazing, man. So um, most people don't know, but um, my family's half Puerto Rican, half Italian. Um, so I have a lot of family over here, friends um, that I've known forever or that, um, you know, I've made over the years um, more recently. But um Everybody knows that I live. I was from the East Coast, um, Boston area, and oh, I, I never just uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everybody, everybody always asks about the accent, um, and yeah, it's Boston. Um, they usually are like Boston and New York, and it, it, it's Boston. Um, but yeah, man, and uh, it, it's been a couple years in the making um, of me switching everything over here um, to Puerto Rico, like. So I had my whole setup um, in Boston, actually Salem, Massachusetts, which is where the witch trials happened. Um, like, so if you read about the witch trials and stuff, it's like the Halloween capital of the world. Um, super cool city. Um, I, I love it there. Um, and what I did was they had um, like this warehouse. It used to be an old ice factory, right? Um, where back in the day, they would make these blocks of ice for the old refrigerators back in like the early 1900s, late 1800s, whatever. Um, and the building, I bought it for dirt cheap. It was just an abandoned building um, with historical significance. And I said, you know what? When everything started growing, now I had a team of 17 employees um, that, that were working on the team, huge grow operation, lab, all that. And when I found this building, I said, I'm going to take a lot of my savings. I'm going to buy this building and I'm going to live here, but I'm also going to turn this into my offices and stuff and, um, and my studio. So I bought yeah, the building. Knows, bro. Yeah. So I bought the building in like 2017, um, the end of 2016. And I, the first thing I did was I started on a studio and making my apartment. Now this, uh, building was 25,000 square feet. Um, huge, huge building, but I got it for dirt cheap. I bought it off the city in an auction for cheap, cheap. Um, so it was a good deal and my apartment was done. Um, and my, well, what I call my apartment and my studio lab offices, stuff like that. But we were still only using, even with the grow, everything that was going on, we was only using about 10,000 square feet of this space. So there was like 15,000 square feet that wasn't Holy being shit. used. Yeah. People don't realize how big 25,000 square feet is. It's, it's, fucking it's like massive, a lot bro. of space. That's <laughs> it's massive. Yeah. And, um, so what ended up happening just because uh, of happenstance and, and whether luck, unlucky, I don't know what you want to call it, but, um, COVID came around and, um, when COVID came around, there was a lot of investors coming around buying properties and stuff. You know, everybody was investing and, you know, flipping stuff and property prices went through the roof. So um, a development company came to me in uh, 2019 and they're like, hey, we want to buy your building and we want to turn it into luxury loft apartments. Um, and they made a ridiculous offer. Um, I accepted, but also part of the deal was they were going to make the first loft and let me stay there for free until all the rest of the lofts were done. Um, and they also were going to let me keep my studio and everything to the last minute. Um, so that took about 
two, three years for them to get that all done. And within that time, I had my house done in Puerto Rico and um, moved to that's Puerto Rico. Cool, so that's how I got down here. That's a, that's a sweet story. You know, I mean, you, you worked hard. Yeah. You got to where you were at. And you, that's obvious. That, honestly, that's the dream for anybody, right? For somebody yeah. to just, you know, come on and... Yeah, you know, I would like to. I would like to retire in a couple of years, and now if somebody came came along <laughs> with a, you know, an insane offer for something, who knows? I've I've always been for some reason lucky with investing. Um, not because I'm looking to make money or anything like that. I've just been lucky. Um, I I just recently told I was telling someone the the story like. So I worked for a pharmaceutical company out of um, college from my master's and I was getting paid well and I was living in a company apartment, had a company vehicle, stuff like that. So I wasn't really spending none of my salary that I would make. So I was able to save that up. And when I left that pharmaceutical company to start doing YouTube uh, and my college content full time, I was living off of my savings that I had made from working at that pharmaceutical company. And one day, one of my friends um, that I went to school with came to me and was like, hey, can you give me a loan? Pretty much. He had a business and he was selling watches. Um, so like really expensive watches like Rolex and stuff like that. I don't know anything like about APs that stuff. stuff. Exactly. But he had a business where he was buying them. And then flipping them. Um, and he was selling so much of them and doing well. He came to me and he was like, Willie, you're the only person I can ask. Um, can you please invest in me? Um, I need to buy some stock. And if I have a large enough amount of capital, I could get these watches at a really cheap price and make more money. So he was like, this is what I'll do for you. I'll give you your money back with a, a good interest rate. Yeah. Um, plus... I'm going to give you a percentage of my, my business. And if I can, I would like to buy that percentage back off of you one day. So I did it I, not because I knew anything about watches, but because I believed in him. Um, and he was an expert in that field. And two years later, he comes back to me, not even like a year later, he came back to me, gave me my money, but it took about two years to get everything done. Um, and he gave me, he bought, the percentage of the company back off of me. And at that time, the company was valued at a couple million dollars. So um, I did well off of that. And, you know, that's what really helped me. And that's why even to this day, I, I took that money and I invested in properties in Boston, three family properties. Um, and I rent them out to mothers on Section 8. Um, I don't rent them to normal people. I just rent them to mothers. Um, battered women, um, recovering alcoholics, recovering drug addicts that have Section 8 um, so I could help them. And then I also hire them to be property managers of the property um, to take care of the property, to make sure the show, snow is shoveled. Give it back to the community, bro. That's yeah, what it's I, all about. That's what you've yeah, always been about. Yeah. My, my mother, me and my two sisters were homeless um, for, for a good period of time. And I always remember that feeling of not having something that's your own and, and saying to myself, one day, if I can, if I can, I, I didn't know if I would be able to, but I want to be able to help people that were in my mother's position and the kids that were in my position. So that's where really where that came from. Um, and, you know, all these little things has set me up to where I don't need to I don't make money off of anything I do content wise. Um, there's money that's generated. TTF Media LLC is a successful company, <laughs> but that money goes back into creating content, hiring employees. We give stuff away to people. We help people, whether it's with lawyers fees or doctor's bills, because I look at that money that I, I, I make on Patreon or, you know, deals that I do or this or whatever, um, not as my money, but as the community giving me that money, trusting me with that money to put it in the right places. That's, that's how I look at things. Um, and that's why I never sold products. That's why I never like started up a supply company. That's why I never started up a genetics company, anything like that, because I wasn't trying to make money off the community. I always wanted to be on the community side. I wanted to be 
not I didn't want to if I sell supplies, right? And I'm going to there's obviously a level of bias there, right? Because it, it's a conflict of interest. You can't sell supplies to your viewers and also be honest. You know what I'm saying? It's like Yeah. You're always going to be on the side of your company and I never wanted to be in that position. So that's just um that's my stance with it. I mean, I mean, me personally, I sell products, but like, I'm not necessarily, I wouldn't say, you know, I'm biased, right? Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of companies that also have a lot of good product out there. Oh, for sure. And just for sure. because, you know, one is good doesn't mean, you know, it's like for the most part, it all does the same, sh the same shit, right? It's like, it's, it's, it's at the end of the day, it's a grain bag and it's substrate. Yep. Now, whether it's like co cocoa based or manure based, that's probably the only difference. And like, I mean, but yeah, you know. No, so no, that's right. Because look, I have people all the time ask me, Willie, where should I buy substrate? Where should I get this? And I always tell whoever them, look, you... yeah, I, I tell them whoever's the cheapest, whoever you, you like their products the most. And I always throw out the same names, brother, just because I'm so used to it. I'm always like Fung Straight, Pugod. Brown Treasure, whoever. Like I'm like these yeah. companies all have good customer service. They all got good products. They all. So at the end of the day, you're not gonna go wrong either way you go. It just depends. If you want, buy a bag off each company and see which one you like more. See which one gets you faster. But at yeah. the end of the day, they're all reputable companies. And you know, and there's also like a convenience aspect, right? Like there's a lot of customers that I don't have merely for the fact that they're on the West Coast and they can go, you know, to a local West Coast vendor much easier and maybe pick it up like you know without shipping prices and that's also so it's at the end of the day there's plenty of room for all of us to eat right and um mm -hmm. so like money should never really even be like an issue anyways it shouldn't be mm -hmm. you know it'll come but if, if it needs yeah. to, you know it'll come and as long as you're passionate about what you're doing for sure for sure um money always follows um i always tell people it took me, I didn't start, I started making videos like in 2014, 2015. I didn't make a single dollar um, until like 2017, 2019. It took years and years of doing this before there was ever even, and when money was starting like... to be generated, it was nothing. It was like, I was still losing money, but I didn't care because I was doing it because I love doing it. And like, you have to have that mindset if you want to. Did they always something. have like the like monetization? Like even back then, like in YouTube, where they... So that's a good question. You want to hear something funny? All right. So yeah. my I'm gonna a lot of people that started YouTube after this probably don't know this, but before on YouTube, um, when you would monetize. It, it was a much better split. So it was like 80, 20, like in your favor or something oh, like that. Shit. Um, but then they had, uh, as time went on, I forget if it was like 2016, 2017, they had something to come along that was called, um, like Adma getting where pretty much like the, it went down to where you only net like 30 or 40% or it's 50, 50, something like that. But YouTube, <laughs> On my first channel, Willie, Willie Michael, my, my first channel ever, uh, we generated like 200 and something thousand dollars in ad revenue. And you know how much I made off of that ad revenue? Uh, a, th a thousand bucks. Damn. So listen, the reason why is because at first they let me monetize my videos and they were paying me, which was cool. It was helping to fund things, whatever. Yeah. I didn't have I didn't have a Patreon at the time. And um shout out to Patreon, by the way. For sure, bro. For sure. We'll get into all that. But there's we I didn't have a Patreon. I just had, was going off of the YouTube AdSense and um YouTube stopped monetizing my videos. They stopped monetizing my videos after like six or eight months. Um so I had made like a thousand bucks and but they kept running ads on my videos, but weren't paying me. So they're know, still allowed that... to run ads on your videos, but they don't need to pay you if they feel that your content goes against their guidelines. So the, I don't know if the rules have changed, um, but that's how it was at least at that time. So for a couple years after they demonetized me, they were still running ads. And um, my videos were getting millions and millions and millions yeah. of views. And um, 
you know, it just sucks that that's how it is, man. Like, that's why, like, a lot of these platforms. Um, well, I've even people... seen, like, even YouTube's been acting up lately. Oh, for you sure. Know? It's, they stay, they stay acting up, but lately, you know, it's been, it's been, like, pretty, it's been pretty rough as far as, like, a lot of the content creators out there. And that it, it, I feel like, you know, a lot of people like yourself who put out the content, who teach, you know, it's like, I'm not even really putting out that much, right? So you're putting out content to teach the people how to do the things, how to make the substrate, how to pour the dishes. And it's like, how people are arguably scared to do this because it's just a fear of knowing that, it, you know, that it's going to be taken down. It's not even like yeah. when, it, not even like, you know, it's like not even like if it's more so a when. Exactly. And that's the thing with YouTube. Um, the thing is, they could shut you down for, for any reason and don't need to give an excuse to it. Um, they don't need to respond to you. They don't need to. That's the thing. So recently, just for example, Oklahoma fungi, Jacob, his YouTube channel got taken yeah, down. Yo, that kid has nothing to do with active mushrooms. Like yeah, nothing. No. His his content had nothing to do with active mushrooms, just gourmet, medicinal, foraging, things like that. And they shut him down. So if they could shut down and when he appealed it, they said, No, you're promoting the sale of illegal goods. And that's and they don't need to give no explanation. It's just like automated, um, it's an algorithm. And um, even when somebody reviews it. It depends on who you get. Um, luckily, I found like the trick to avoid getting in trouble with YouTube. Um, and I try to teach that to everybody that's a YouTube content creator. And all right, so back when I first started my first channel, Willie Michael, I had content on there like DMT extractions, cultivating start to finish, showing me harvesting the mushrooms, showing what the mushrooms look like. You can't do that. Um, so now if you see my content on YouTube, you'll see that I explain how to do things, but I don't actually show the mushrooms. I don't show harvesting the mushrooms. I, if I show the mushrooms, it's fine. I could show active mushrooms, but I can't show you how to grow those mushrooms. I could show them and be like, oh, look how cool this is. This is the difference between this one and this one. But if I'm telling you to grow it and show you how to grow it, then that's where YouTube's going to shut you down. So you can't do that. So all these creators that have videos doing that, they like skyrocketed <laughs> in subscribers, right? And, and yeah. views. But I'm telling you, it's short-lived. It's going to be short-lived because I did it for so long. It, eventually, it's just going to be the day that you get picked up on the algorithm and they, they shut you down. So you have to, what I do, is I do a YouTube version of my videos and then I do a Patreon version. So if you want to see start to finish the cultivation, how to do this, go to my Patreon. That's what I always tell people. But here on YouTube, I'm going to give you the basics of what we're talking about and stuff without stepping over that line. Even some of my videos come really close to stepping over that line, but I don't step over that line because at the end of the day, even if we hate YouTube, right? Like YouTube's a shitty platform as far as the way that their community guidelines yeah. go and stuff like that. YouTube's still the biggest streaming YouTube's platform. YouTube, you can't and, not, you know what and, I mean? That's like saying you have to have a presence on YouTube if you're creating content. Exactly. So you just got to try to play ball within the guidelines that they set up. Um, and luckily, no issues with YouTube. Uh, they struck one of my videos um, a couple months ago. No, not even like a month ago. And um, I beat it. Like, I, I won the appeal, which is fascinating. But Dude, I mean, even know? on Instagram, for myself, I haven't even really been having that many problems as far as my videos getting popped or, like, you know, pinged anymore. Whereas when I first started this account, I was pretty much only posting, like, photos of fruits, um, tub photos, that were mm -hmm. sent to me with the variety name and all of the information about that variety. And it was just like hundreds of posts of different varieties. And at that point, like I got banned like every other day for a week in a row, a 30 day ban. And then mm -hmm. I appealed it for a week in a row. So it took me 14 days to get the account back because I had to wait 24 hours. 
every mm-hmm. in between each <laughs> appeal. Yep. Um, so that I like wiped my whole account, and now that's why I, like I kind of that's why I turn to posting myself more, posting like you know like talking like updates about mycology kind of like the ends of the the community you know what i mean those like inside jokes that you only know unless you're here Mm -hmm. yeah but i think everybody all of us that have been doing this that have a big enough presence has been booted from instagram at one point or another um i went through it with my large account i got two accounts i got my main account then i have a backup account i really don't use my main account because my main account is I don't want it to get taken down, you know, it has a, a large following. So I don't even really post on there. I don't do stories. I just have it there. Um, yeah. I, I do everything on my backup account um, because if they take away my backup account, it's like, whatever, it, it's a backup account, but um, the official account is still the official account. That's all it, that really it, matters. It, exactly. Exactly. So, you know, it sucks that we have to do stuff like that because, you know, you see these reality TV show stars and stuff like that. They don't have to have backup accounts and all that stuff. Like no. it's kind of shitty that that we do, um, and that's why Patreon. Like I, I'm such a big advocate for for them 100%. because they, they're like we fuck with you guys. Like you know we understand what you guys are doing. As long as you could do it by what we lay down, we're we're cool with it. And that's why like none of these other platforms, Instagram, YouTube, none have laid down something to say like. It's okay to do it, but you have to do it this way, and we won't give you any shit. At least if you could give us some feedback, some guidance, um, it would be helpful. And Patreon's the only one that's doing something like that. You know, that's uh, it's cool that you were able to be involved in actually rewriting the terms and regulations as far as the mycology community and the content we're allowed to host on patreon right yeah. um and i think that that's a good thing to maybe talk about like this is for everybody who has a patreon account or maybe aspiring content creators what are we allowed to do what are we yeah. or not allowed to do this is good i'll break it down for you so um for a long time I, I like i said i didn't have a patreon i didn't even know what patreon was until i got demonetized on my first channel and people were like Hey, Willie, you should open up a Patreon. We'll support you, like, you know, so that you can keep these videos coming. And I, I looked into it. It took me a while to do it because I never wanted to ask my supporters, my trip team family to support me. You know, like I figured if you watch my videos, you're supporting me and I'll get money from the ads. Right. Like let somebody else pay for the content. Yeah. Um, dude. But then, I, you know, all the trials and tribulations with YouTube and stuff. I started looking into um, Patreon <laughs> and I started one up. And, um, you know, I just kept trying to make it better and make it better and make it better and really learn the platform and, you know, what we could do, what we can't do. And um, I got in early and um, because my my Patreon has grown so big um, and it's a a extremely successful Patreon channel, they, they came to me about like eight months ago. And we're like, Willie, like, we want to make you an ambassador, like, put you in this ambassador program, make you an ambassador for for Patreon. And I was like, all right, cool. That sounds great. But what what is the benefits? Like, what what do I get? So they're like, look, you're going to get to try out different features before we release them to the public. So you and your your supporters will be able to try out different features. Like, so we got to try out the chat before it came out. Uh, We got to try out different things. Now you could do chats on on Patreon, so you could do live like I see the little like chat. Yep, like a little bubble chat bubble thing. Yeah, so you could communicate with the people that support you and and like you know just talk to people, which is great. It makes it easy. Um, But also too, they're like you know you'll be in on Zoom calls and and stuff like that with the creators and other creators that make content and moderators. You're all just like working together as like pretty much exactly. It's a big group. Exactly, it's a big group, and they come to us and say, "What would you like to see change?" So, I came up with a couple different ideas um, that I mentioned to them. So I had mentioned um, one about the community guidelines, like you know. Uh, which we just seen go into effect. 
But I also mentioned like for the creators, like people like myself and you and other people on Patreon, if they could, you know, reward the creators for hitting certain milestones, like, you know, like, hey, you've got so many Patreon supporters, here is an award or, or here's something, put them up on the front page of Patreon, like, you know, creator of the month or creator of whatever. So people, they get some exposure. Yeah. Um, you know, I brought up ideas like this, but specifically they, they were like about the guidelines when it comes to drugs. Right. And I hate using that term drugs, right. Cause drugs just sounds fucking. Yeah, yeah I know. Drugs is an um, ugly word. E- exactly. But that's the way they came. And they're like, what about our drug section? What would, what would be beneficial to you guys creating content like you create, but also, at the same time, you know, make sure we're not the wild, wild west over here, you know. And I said, look, just like clear cut, like allow us to do things to a certain point and tell us what that is and let everybody know, like you support us creating this content. Give us some assurities that we're not just going to wake up one day and our Patreon's going to be shut down. And there goes that income that we was paying our team and creating the content. Um, so we went through and I was like, look. I want to create content that's educational, um, that's scientific. I'm not telling people to abuse these things. I'm not telling, I'm actually the complete opposite. I'm telling people the benefits of these things. So they put that all in nice terms with their attorneys and stuff like that. And pretty much they came up with the new guidelines that went into effect the other day um, that pretty much says as long as it's in a scientific, medical, you know, or educational way, Um, you could show people how to grow. You could talk about certain substances. You could do this. You could do that. As long as you're not showing yourself abusing, um, any type of substance, it doesn't matter if it's mushrooms or cocaine. It it, it don't matter. Just not abusing any type of substance. Um, and you're not telling people where to acquire those substances. Like, Hey, go to Mark on the corner and he'll sell you what you need. Like, or go to this website and they'll sell you what you need. Um, as for the final substance. Um, then you're good. And another thing is you can't offer certain things which are tears, like obviously genetics and stuff like that. When you say the final substance, so, okay, so you can't offer, so you're not, what about spores? Is So, no, 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 I, I could tell people like, hey, go to blah, blah, blah.com and buy, you could buy your spores. Okay. Um, but when I say the final substance, like I can't say like, hey, go, go to, to somebody's cell and we'll go buy and- mushrooms. Go buy mushrooms or go buy DMT or go buy well, yeah. this. Exactly. But they, they have to put that in there. But if you're talking about the supplies you're using in a video, like, hey, I got this from here, I got this from here and here, um, that's fine. Um, you could even partner up with companies like, hey, I'm, I'm partnered up with ITW, I'm partnered up with Baz, or I'm partnered up with this person or whoever. And, um, you know, they, they're offering us a discount right now. I have a huge discount codes channel on my Patreon and you know, all my Patreon ch- users get to access those discount codes through all these vendors. I got a discount code with you. Um, and they all get to access that discount code. So at the end of the day, um, that's it. But pretty much in their guidelines, they, they said like, you know, we, we permit it, we support it. And, um, that, that's all that matters. That's a huge win because before, um, yeah, it was just 100%, very big. Man. You know, it's like that's that is the the com the comfort, right? The comfort that we have to be able to post all that content, and it's not even necessarily, um, you know, I, I feel like a lot of it for these people isn't just a channel. This is a lifetime of work that mm-hmm. they've put into, and in you know, YouTube quite literally just takes away with the snap of the, of a finger. You could have, you know, 10 years worth of work and studies all on this channel, all experimentation, fails, successes, and then it's gone. And, you know, they see it as like, sorry, drugs. And yeah. they're allowing your their robot to take that away. And you're like, mm-hmm. dude. <laughs> what? Yeah. And they don't care. Like, and that's the thing. So, like, it, it just goes on and, you know. Like, they don't care. But the crazy thing is, like, I always said, but you have these creators, like, these prank creators and stuff like that that are showing stuff that can actually get people hurt 
or even or actually you know, does hurt people or killed or, or yeah. whatever like i see people going into like dangerous areas and fucking with people and, oh yeah like throwing up gang what, signs yeah and, like, like one of know, these days like, like somebody's gonna pull like, out of something and just off them like and it's okay to have that and that video will go viral and that video won't get struck down and they won't lose their channel but us talking about something natural that 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 grows from the earth that's been around longer than religion itself um has gets struck down it makes no sense it, it just don't make well, no sense it's the like, whole, i guess like you know fact of that this actually helps rather than suppresses whatever is actually going on because yeah. the suppressors you end up needing more of, and when it actually heals you, you don't need to use it anymore. And then if you don't use it anymore, then you're not going to make any more money. And then what would you do if you didn't make any more money? It, it's crazy. Like, you know, I'll, I got a, a screen recording, but I clicked on one of my videos a while back, before, and they were running ads for pharmaceuticals, like before my videos, like, you know, Zoloft and shit like really? that. And it's like, yeah, like SSRIs. Can and you have running... control as to what kind of ads they put on your content? No, nah, they could put whatever they want on your content. Um, they, and also too, they, they usually run ads that have something to do with what your content is about. So if you're a person that's teaching people how to take photography, you'll usually get an ad on your videos that's for like film or SD cards or, or whatever. Uh. Something correlating to what is going on. When I, uh, like if you grow cannabis, I've seen this too, like it, it, and you're showing people how to cultivate cannabis, a lot of the ads are, are for LED light setups and, and stuff like that. So it was just funny because on mines where I'm talking about microdosing specifically, they're showing ads for, for antidepressants <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> like which is which is crazy like but that's that's just the world we live in and and the thing is youtube has so much fucking power bro like so much power so much influence that you know i wish people really need to wake up for the people that that don't know like we're being programmed all the time and i'm not going on some crazy fucking kanye shit or anything like that i'm just saying this is real life like they they do want to keep us down because when we're we're oppressed, when we're down and we don't fight back and we don't speak out or we don't break out that box, we're much easier to control. We're a herd of cattle, and they're trying to direct us in one direction. They're trying to direct us on who we vote for. Um, they want to direct us on what we think, what we eat, what we use, what we buy. So it's just all like up. marketing, you know, like at the end of the day, like the, all the commercials, everything, all of the like pretty much whatever I feel comes from the higher power of government, you know, it all correlates and it just drizzles down to it, everything, you know, mm -hmm. probably down to like even like colors of like products that you, you know what I mean? There's a whole science to all of this stuff totally agree with that man yeah man so like thinking outside the box thinking about natural medicines and thinking about spirituality different and our capabilities um on a spiritual level and on a physical level isn't something that makes them very happy you know what i'm saying it's not something that they could profit off of so they don't care but if i'm over here showing um a, a police officer killing an um, unarmed man, or I'm over here showing uh, a man killing some police officers doing their job. You know, what works on both ends of the spectrum, right? Not not on either side. They'll 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 promote that because they want to be fear mongers, right? So they want us yeah. to be scared, and they want us to think one way. So they push that content to us to make us think. When COVID was happening, and you know when but George it's almost Floyd, like forcibly funneling, right? Whereas like you could see whatever you, in the community and even in our community, we actively can show that like money can be generated and people can be fed. Yeah. Well, yeah, no. and like, you know what I mean? And it doesn't have to be through like ma like brainwashing and fucking like negative, you know, we do it through positivity and you, growing as a community. So it's just a yeah. weird concept that like you, if you could choose to be, you know what I mean? It's almost actively choosing to be evil. 
Yeah, I mean, like I like I was just saying, like you know, when when George Floyd was murdered, because I believe he was murdered, right? Um, that's my yeah, my personal sure. personal opinion. Um, and I, I'm not political in any sense of the word. That's why I moved to Puerto Rico. I'm, I'm a resident of Puerto Rico. I, I can't even vote for the president. I'm not allowed to vote. Puerto Ricans can't vote for for the president of the United States of America. Um, so when I so I lost my right to vote when I became a citizen of Puerto Rico. Um, so, but when George Floyd, BLM, and all the other people that were innocently killed for no reason, um, when all that happened and it, it created a division, right? Like, and so you'd see a lot of content being viral that showed that division between one side and the other. Um, and because Division is good. They want to push people in a certain direction. That's their their thing when really at the end of the day, they hate all of us equally, regardless of your skin color, regardless of your background. Their agenda is their agenda. And I'm not saying YouTube has an agenda, but I'm saying politically and as as a country, like they, there's an agenda in the world and they hate us all the same. So when we're over here fighting between each other, and not sticking together. And I feel like this is the same in the mycology psychedelic community. When If we're bickering back and forth, what's really happening is people are moving around us while we're occupied over here, moving around us yeah. to get ahead of us and, and get there first to, to satisfy their agenda. So when we stick together and we can talk as adults and look at things rationally, um, we, we could accomplish a lot. I always say the the mycology and psychedelic community is a big community, but you'll see there's little sectors like this people don't mess with these people and this person don't mess with this person. Yeah, and it's like, I do. I don't understand that. I'm cool with everybody. Um, I even say it like, even if you Same. don't like me, I love you. Like that's how, that's how I look at things because at the end of the day, I have no hard feelings or no ill will towards anybody. I'm about the people of this space and about the medicine um well i feel like it's like the people who are matters. negative like that man are just kind of like sorry to interrupt you but it's just like these dozen people who are just like you know i guess like have ego for no reason right those are the people it's like why i guess compensating for something uh maybe they want bigger toes or something yeah i mean look <laughs> at the end of the day brother i i just don't get it um I, no. You know, some yeah. people in this space, you look and they're just about. Well, that's not active. even in this space. That's just in any yeah, space. A, any right? space, any space, any space. But like you'll see, like that that fighting, and there there's always an agenda there. But I always say, like, look, when we come together as one, when like, and I I love that this happened because I've seen the whole community come together, regardless of where you stood, when. Max Yield Vins tried to trademark Micropose. Right? Oh, yeah. Every, that. Everybody that knows that story. The whole fucking community was pissed off. Everybody stood together on that. Yeah. Recently, on a video I put up on Instagram of somebody talking about slipping somebody something without their knowledge, the whole community came together and was like, this is not right. So... It's like when you see stuff like that, you see the possibility of like, look how fucking strong we are together. Because right? we all came together for Micropose and voiced how we were unhappy with that situation. They dropped the trademark so that Micropose was able to keep their, their brand. Yeah. Um, and that's what I mean. When we're together, our voice is so big. So like bring the community together. Bro, I work with everybody, whether they're a small creator, a big creator. I don't look at numbers. I don't look at stuff. I look at the person that they are and what they're trying to do for the community. And that's all that matters to me. Bro, that's it. When I, like you, as far as like, you know, you and I are concerned, I've always just considered you just the homie, right? And, you know, people yeah. are like, bro, Willie, Michael. I'm like, bro, he's just like the, you know what I mean? Exactly. exactly. I don't think you know what I mean. It's like, you should actually just, you know, try to message him or try to speak to him because like, it's not... It's not this whole cloud thing. It's like no. you, we're humans. You're a human, and I've you've only you treat yourself like a human, and you also treat the people who support you like humans. And I think it's such a beautiful thing, my guy. Right yeah. for somebody who has 
a large following of people, you know, you've taught a lot of people and a lot of people respect you. So it's cool yeah. that like, there's people who are like, l you know, lesser of a following who have larger egos in the community. And that is a very yeah. clear thing. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we see it. We see it, you know, and it's like, look, man, I always tell people I'm the same as, as you, brother. I, we care about the same thing, um, regardless of numbers and, and what's been accomplished. At the end of the day, we all want the same thing. Um, you know, I do one on one phone calls through my Patreon and stuff. And sometimes people will get on those phone calls and they'll cry because they're talking to me and they're so happy. And I'm like, look, I appreciate that that you feel that way but to me you're my brother or you're my sister so us having this conversation it isn't me up here you down here we're right here we're we're, we're on the same level like exactly. I, I i'm the type of person like man i go to these events and stuff like that like man i'm walking around i'm talking to people and they, like man you don't need to have an ego like they what's the point what's the point i i don't get it there is I, no I, I point you know it's just um it's a like ego is just expectation if you take expectation away there will be no ego yeah a lot of people ask me too about the mask and just because we're kind of on the subject um they're like willie why do, why do you wear a mask well the reason why i wear a mask originally was obviously no face no case right like that yeah. that was my that that was my that was my no face no case for everybody that was back when and we started though that different times that was that was back when we started but it kind of became a part of who i am but also it's for ego um i don't want to walk through an airport i don't want to walk into some event and people are like oh my god like I, I don't want that. I want to be just like you. I want to sit down. I want to smoke a, 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 a doobie with you. I want to, you know, laugh. Yeah, I, mean, I want to talk about that. new texts and I want to talk about new genetics and I want to talk about new things. I'm just a like, normal sometimes fucking Sometimes I don't person, want to talk about bro. any text. <laughs> yeah, I just want to sit down and just chill. And <laughs> how's your family? And, and what are you doing this summer? Like, I, that, so that's really what it is. Like, it gives me a sense of even though i give everything to the community i'm an open book with the community it kind of gives me just a little bit of myself to retain because i don't want that ego i i i don't want to feel like ever that i'm better or bigger and I, not even that i because i know i'll never feel that way i don't want people to feel that way um so i feel like yeah, this kind of helps with that like it, it normalizes me more um you know and I love, obviously, you know, I've been in high times in this magazine and that magazine and this documentary and this interview. Mm -hmm. And it's fun. I love it. It's, it's, it's a good time and you're able to put stuff out there on a bigger platform and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, um, it none of it matters. I really just care about the people like you and the people watching this video, the Marks and the Sarahs and the Allisons and the Jacobs and the yeah, whoever is watching. That's who I care about. That's who I want to talk to. Man, I've gotten to know so many people through my journey doing this. It's honestly, I, people ask me, what's the favorite part about what you do? I love traveling to different locations, finding mushrooms. I love that. But on my day-to-day -day schedule, just a regular week in the life of Willie Michael, it's my one-on-one -on -one phone calls. When I get to sit down for a half an hour with each person and just get to talk to them and get to know them and get to know their family. I get to meet their kids and their wives and Dude, their husbands. Dude, that just sick? Like, even doing that at I, the freaking events, meeting all the people at the events, when you I go there and they're it. like, yo, what's up? And you get to give this person a hug that you've been speaking to for, like, five years over the internet. Exactly, man. <laughs> I've, met, I've, I've met some of the, like, you know, uh, me and D-Rock knew each other for a while through, you know D-Rock the Menace, right? Like, music artist? Oh, uh, I don't know. D-Rock the Menace. It sounds familiar. Dude, check out D-Rock. If anybody that's watching this, check out D-Rock. He he he's 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 a musician. Um, extremely fucking talented. He does the intro music for my video. Um, okay. And all his music is about psychedelics and higher levels, higher vibrations. It just makes you feel good. All his music just makes you feel good, and he's really yeah. talented. Um, but like we knew each other and we didn't really meet each other in person until we started doing events and he's performing at these events and I'm there to speak at these events and we're finally able to meet and it's like coming in contact with long lost relatives that you haven't Dude, seen. Dude, that is forever. so awesome. Like, you know, um, 
in like meeting all the people that write comments under your stuff and like just from seeing their name pop up so much you're like i know this person and when they come and they're like oh i'm xyz dot whatever on Dude, instagram it's like I oh love that's it. you I'm like, like yeah that's the that's the most amazing feeling man like it, it just to know like you got this huge support network across the world um that that loves you like truly for just being who you are and that, that's like not necessarily even just like mycology right you're an entrepreneur mm -hmm. in you know ask many aspects of life man right um i mean uh i want to know like what so what do you do for your hobbies outside of Myco, when you're just that's you a, know just maxing relaxing question. Yeah, man. So, um, to be honest, um, I love my dog, um, and my bird. I got my dog and my bird. Um, so I take my dog to the beach every chance I could get. The beach is right down the street from my house. So like nice. I just walk over to the beach and, um, I'll just hang out there with him. We'll go swimming. Um, I fly planes. I have my pilot's license, so I fly planes. Um, That's I like cool, doing that. Dude. So, you know, now that I'm based in PR, I've been able to like island hop, like rent a plane and go to like St. Thomas and things like that and check out different islands. Yo, I'm a um, licensed skydiver. I, I'll take you up and you could jump up. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Full send, bro. I, I got you. Um, but yeah, man. Um, but also too, man, um, I love movies, bro. Like, I love watching movies. Um, nice. I've been really into writing my book that's coming out. So, like, when I get spare time, I'm writing. Um, okay, well, you know, let's, yeah. let's talk a little bit about the book, if you want. If that, that's kind of cool. What, what's that about? Yeah, so my book is coming out um, this year. And it's going to revolutionize the, the way people look at psychedelics um, in their possibilities. So the book is called... And this is the official title. We just like finalized it. Um, it's called Keys to the Gods. And um, nice. it's going to have a, a subtitle. We're still working out the subtitle, but the name of the book is going to be Keys to the Gods. Um, and it's a book I've been working on for about five, six years. And um, it breaks down psychedelics, but then you get to each chapter is a different person's story um so it's not a trip report it's you get to know their life before psychedelics why they came to psychedelics the traumas the hurts their psychedelic experience and then after the psychedelic experience how their life has changed and these are all about breakthroughs so like when you read this book when you read a story it's literally like you're there it's so detailed that you're living vicariously through this person telling their story. Now, all these people in this book don't know each other from a hole in the wall. These are all people from all around the world. So are these some all of them are... actual true stories? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Actual true stories, 100%. Um, so the book opens up with myself um, and goes into one of my stories, um, one of my most profound. And then we got... Uh, that a purple heart veteran that lost limbs he was a marine um and was on the verge of committing suicide and found psychedelics through another member at the va um and that changed his life we have a mother who these lost are all him. different type types of psychedelics as well it's not one specific yeah, yeah yep so uh we have dmt we have mushrooms um mothers that lost their children um you know, I mean, like really deep, bro, you, That's I really promise cool. you to anybody that reads this book, you cannot read one story without crying. And I'm not like an, a super emotional, like soft person. Like, it's just so hard to hear these people tell their deepest, darkest traumas and know that they lived through this without feeling just like horrible for this person and then their experience and how they came out of it after and it's just like i wanted this book to be right um i didn't want to just throw something together i, I wanted it to be perfect cover to cover um Dude, so it I, sounds beautiful it sounds yes. like you know it actually shows the nitty-gritty of what psychedelics can actually do this ain't exactly. just like you know the unicorns and rainbows of going through you know, an ayahuasca trip at a, at a yoga retreat or like mm -hmm. taking an eighth of mushrooms at your friend's party. 
This is like doing the work and showing that like anybody can go through damn near anything and, you know, come out happy. Yeah. And, you know, I started this book. Um, I was on it for a couple of years and then Willie, Michael, everything started getting so much bigger and I was split off in so many different directions. So I needed somebody to come on and help me put everything into writing so pretty much um take these stories let's put them into the book format take what i'm telling you put it into the book format i needed like a person to help me get this finished so i ended up reaching out to an amazing writer a good friend of mine's and i know you know him too uh philly fungi philadelic um philadelic. yeah no yeah for a long so, time. yeah so he is the co-writer of the book i brought brought him on and um it's been a pleasure working with him and I couldn't have got the book wrapped up without his help. Um, he did awesome. a lot of stuff that I wasn't physically able to do or whatever, like sitting down with He's people a good guy. and talking to them for hours to get their stories and stuff like that. He, he is, he is, he's a very good friend of mine. Um, and he works for me. Um, but he also, I was excited to be able to bring him in and partner up. Um, yeah, I remember when he told me, like, I, when he was, like, he was stoked. I was like, dude, congrats, man. That's big. When he was like, I'm moving to Puerto Rico. I was like. Yeah. Yeah, he's, do he's doing well, man. He's doing well. And um, he's now, I believe, like, so he, he works for me. He works for Philly Golden Teacher. I think now he's even working for Oklahoma Fungi, like. So he runs a lot of people's social media and their Discord servers and stuff like that. So he does a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but he, he's definitely a, a good person. So if anybody's watching, go follow Philadelic. Um, good guy. Solid guy. For sure. For sure. Dude. Dude. You, know, you, have, you only have a dog. You have one dog. One dog. My other dog passed away. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, yeah, last December, like right, right around Christmas time, um, which was one what of the hardest of things. What kind of dog do you have? Uh, so I got a black German Shepherd. Um, his name's Conjure. He's inside the house right now. And my dog that passed away was my Yorkie. Um, he was 12 years old, and he had, he got cancer, unfortunately. And um, but yeah, I so I had two dogs and the bird, and now I just have um my oh, and the bird. What kind of bird do you have? I have a pineapple conure. Uh, his name's Frenchie, and um, you can probably hear him in a lot of my videos tweeting in the back. Like, but there's nothing I could do if I'm not in the room with him. <laughs> he starts screaming because he wants to be wherever I am. But he's funny, man. Like, and he talks, and he's he's Dude, just, that's so cool. He's my ride or die for sure. I used to have a. I used to have a love bird. Yeah, I just, yeah. I got a little tattooed right on my leg. Oh, nice, nice. His name actually. Was he looks like he looks like my bird. Oh, that's he awesome. He looks like man. my bird. Yeah, and, man. Uh, I love I love birds, man. I I love birds. Um, but I love dogs too. I love all animals, brother. I'm a I'm same. a big animal I'm just lover. a big animal I, person as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, got a pretty. Pretty important question for you. Yeah. Um, you know, might be a hard one. Okay. <laughs> what is your favorite breakfast food? Um, my favorite breakfast food, hands down, is gonna be waffles. I love waffles, like Belgian waffles. I nice. fucking love them. But I, I like fruit. I like eggs. Um, you know, I, I'm a vegetarian. Um. So, but I'll still eat. Really, beer. I did not um, yeah, know I'm not, that. I'm not vegan. Yeah, I've been a uh, vegetarian. How long have you been vegetarian? Eight years. Oh shit, dude. Yeah, and a little bit before that, um, like I, I was, but then I stopped because when you travel so much to different countries and stuff, it's super hard to stay vegetarian. Um, it's it's super hard because you go to places and sometimes it's just not options for that. Um, or like to have like fish sauce and shit and like curries and stuff. Exactly. Like, so I've been in like the jungle where it's like, you know, there, there is no vegetarian options. It's whatever they have is yeah. they're eating. Oh. And if you don't eat, so usually I try to bring like protein bars, granola bars. I'm, I'm big. Like I've been a boxer and a baseball player my whole life. So like 
I go and um, I work out a lot. So I, I protein bars, granola bars, things like that. And I just try to pack up a bunch of that stuff and live off that. Oh yeah, was baseball big big in your family like growing up? Was that a big uh, yeah, thing? Or... Yes, really big. Boxing and baseball um, is is always been big in my family. Um, my my actual dad is a Golden Gloves winner, um, and you know, baseball like has just kind of like that's cool. Golden Glove, dude. You got yeah. the hands, man. Those yeah, probably... I've broken my, I've broken my hands so many times. Um, my man of carpal bones, like it's called a boxing fracture, bro. To the point to where I don't even go to the doctors no more when it happens, just because really? I'm so used to it. Yeah, I'm so used. What to a it. badass! It's like, so I broke my hand, but it's all right. I'm just going back. I'd be like, oh no, my life's over. <laughs> no man, one time my thumb, I could I could show you an X-ray. I I I, I said, man, like this whole yeah, this thumb seven. was just shattered, like it exploded, and my thumb was like this. No way. Inside, I just, the, the, I went to the hospital and they're like, look, you need immediate surgery or you'll never gain function of your thumb again. Holy my shit. Thumb, my thumb's fine and I never got the surgery. Um, yeah. Well, I, dude, I just left was it. Was that from a, like, did you box? Were you yeah. boxing yeah, like so, boxer growing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so I boxed from the age I was eight. Um, I, I, I boxed. And so boxing isn't about hurting the other person it's more of like a discipline it's more of an art and um just in this one fight like i came around and when i came around my thumb actually hit the guy and just shattered man because it was a hard punch and um uh, uh. it split open above his eyebrow but i hit him wrong so i ended up fucking up myself too but i went on um and actually won but yeah man it was what it was champ. um it it was pretty bad, man. I've broken these bones in my hand so many times. That's crazy, dude. That's like that's pretty interesting. Um, yeah. I, you know, I did a little bit of kickboxing when I was younger, probably like a couple of months, and it was like this guy, basically in his front yard, who had a, uh, like a bo- a hitting bag, a punching bag hanging off of a tree, mm-hmm. and uh, we couldn't really afford to pay for it. We were kind of pretty poor growing up so got yeah. got in for a couple of months it was fun though yeah me too I, I was I, we was we was poor after my mother and father divorced we we went homeless like I told you um yeah oh and... no yeah I mean it was something like so it wasn't even like I was like I would like to say like I had a house over my head and yeah. sometimes we ate pasta for like a couple of weeks in a row yeah you yeah know? I, and, and I get like, it I man. You know, my life yeah. wasn't like miserable, but I wasn't like it, it wasn't. You know, depends. See, it depends. It's just so situational. A lot of people, I tell my story, and they're like, "Holy shit, you went through what?" And I'm like, "Ah, you yeah. know, it's Tuesday." Exactly, and like you know, when so like my childhood was normal for the most part, except my father was extremely abusive. Um, but I think like a lot of that is because of the boxing and stuff, like getting hit in the head and stuff. Like he just. And he had a really rough childhood growing up, um, but him and my mother divorced, and um, I was like 13, 14 years old at the time. Um, but up until that point, 13, 14, my life was normal. Like, luckily, the boxing club that I was a part of, um, I had already been there since I was eight. So, like, they even though my mother didn't you know, family have the point. money, yeah, they they still I, I was able to train and continue, and I, I stayed boxing, like in the the gym for the boxing club up into the point i graduated high school and then when i went off to college and stuff i would go back occasionally um but boxing was never a career that i wanted to make i just loved the sport of boxing yeah i just loved doing it i love training and um you know i love watching old boxing videos of like old fighters like like muhammad what did you do before you got into uh content creation so yeah, so before I, I I did a lot. So um before I got into content creation, immediately before, I, actually at the same time I was creating content, I worked for a pharmaceutical company. Um and I was making really good money. Oh yeah, but you that, mentioned that, that. That was after my masters, but before through college and after high school and stuff like that, um I worked at pizza shops. I worked um you know 
the pizza shop is the most memorable and that's because i was a broke college student and um i took a job at a pizza shop because um they allowed me to eat for free so as long as i, I worked there i was only making seven dollars an hour right under the table um but they would let me take food and make myself food as long as i was working so i really just kept that job so that i could eat because i was yeah. broke um but yeah, man, I, I did that. Um, I worked at an auto parts store. I just little odds cool, and jobs. Um, and then when I went in, when I finished my, my bachelor's first, my first four years, um, I took some time off of school and I traveled. Um, I went to other countries and I went to see what's like. Like where's uh where you said you went, you traveled. So where are some of your uh, favorite places that you've been to? Not necessarily per se, because of like the views or just more so like the experience that you had at the place? Yeah. So, um, it's, that's a tough one, man. Um, because there's so many beautiful places and I've had so many amazing experiences, but, um, South America, um, Central America is also, is always going to be one of the most profound places because they have so much to do with, psychedelics mushrooms and dmt but africa is amazing um i've been to south africa i've been to the congo um i've been to australia i've been to europe i've been to the philippines i've been to cambodia laos um burma uh, i've been all over man like and i took two years almost off of school um to go travel and meet with these different cultures and see what significance psychedelics had on their culture and their religion and their belief system. So I traveled and I just backpacked and went to different places. And when I had enough money to buy a plane ticket and go somewhere else, I, I just did it, man. And I just was Dude. enjoying life and trying That's to learn as much as I could about psychedelics and the spiritual aspects to it and the medicinal aspects to it. Um, and then I said, you know what, I want to go back to school. Cause now I felt like I had already known, cause I got a microbiology degree four years. Then I traveled the world for almost two years, learning about psychedelics and mushrooms and everything else. And culturally what significance they had before that high school, I, I started like really getting into psychedelics at 14 years old. I did my first mushroom grow. And I did it all through high school. Really? All 14 years old, you did your first mushroom grow? First mushroom grow. What a um, gangster, dude. My first PF Tech. Um, I was like well, fucking 20 something. <laughs> yeah. So, so 14, because my mother started telling me about her psychedelic experiences that she had when her and my dad divorced. Me and my mom became close and she opened up to me and started telling me about her LSD experiences, her mescaline experiences, and how she would see the universe and this connection she had with her friends. And I, and I always growing up was like, what happens after we die? Like, what is this just it? Are we here? Is, is that it? Yeah, like, that's the ultimate life question. Life right? and, and that's it. And then when I started hearing, so I was always into like the occult as a kid, like UFOs and ghost yeah. and stuff like that because i wanted to see like is there any answers there as far as like what happens after we die and then when my mom started telling me this a light bulb went off in my head because i had never heard anything like this before i'm like what if these things were put here for us to connect with god while we're alive and um or gods or whatever is out there right so I started learning everything I could. And then I did my first grow in high school and my first extraction and this and that. And then I traveled, like I said, did four years in school, traveled for two. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to go back and get my master's in organic drug synthesis because I want to learn about the compounds themselves. I want to learn about the structures, what makes them. I want to learn about LSD and as LSA. As far as extraction goes, when you say extraction, is that the extraction of um oh so the extraction that i did in high school for, was dmt um okay. I, I didn't really i didn't have the money to buy things or the space to you know do something large scale like I yeah could now. um but i say extraction so there's two different words there's synthesis and there's extraction right so like they kind of both are used interchangeably but like at the end of the day extraction really should refer 
to something that's naturally occurring that we're just extracting from something. So like DMT, we extract it from mimosa hostilis or acacia yeah. confusia or canary grass or whatever we extract it from. Um, but it's there already. We don't need to biosynthesize anything or anything like that. But when we do something like MDMA or LSD or something like that, even though the main ingredient is there, we have to run it through a process to turn it into what the final product is. And that's a synthesis because we're actually synthesizing something. Um, when you say like what like a process, so what about like like uh like the closed system, like Soxlet system? Is that a synthesis or? Well, it depends on what you're doing. Like if you're just using like a a, a Soxlet or a Rotovap or a distiller to like distill off like ethanol, methanol, or whatever. Yeah, I don't even what you... really know anything about it, but I'm that's you know I'm just kind of yeah. asking like so a, a lot of people. Of... A Soxlet is, is, is a piece of equipment um, and it heats things up and then things are collected in what's called the collection flask or a collection mm -hmm. beaker. Um, so you'll see a lot of people do like crystals of the gods or, or a more pure version of the psilocybin extraction. Um, you know, I mean, even when you get into like LSD and MDMA and stuff like that, you're going to need different pieces of equipment like rotovaps um you know distillers decant all, all these different uh, pieces of equipment rotovaps aren't as expensive as they used to be before rotovap would cost you ten thousand dollars um, isn't a rotovap where it like released or lowers the pressure or something like that so what a rotovap is is like say like um i got my lsd mix right um in, in the rotovap so it's a it's a big circular beaker with a, uh -huh. with a long neck and it sits in a hot pot of water and it rotates. And what that does is it heats it up and then things evaporate and then it goes down this thing. It's a glass tube called a cooling tube. Mm -hmm. And it will go down the cooling tube and collect in a collection beaker and leave all the solids and other things that we don't want behind and what's in the end of that other thing is yeah. what we need to move to the next step or our final product or, or, or whatever. I mean, it depends yeah, on what you're doing. I know like a, uh, lot, a lot of people do that with like reishi or like lines vein and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now we're seeing a lot of like double extractions and, and stuff like that. So like double extractions, usually they'll do like water alcohol or, or, or ethanol, um, ethanol water based or oil ethanol based things like that. So you're seeing double extractions um, to get more of a full spectrum effect from the concentrates and stuff like that um but yeah man uh we you're somewhere from boston right like i mean like as far as like your 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 baseball team as well everything yeah 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 yeah, yeah. everything <laughs> yeah so, so look i i I never like like as far as like the Patriots, the Red Sox, all that stuff goes. Um, you know, I never got like super super like diehard um, into into like sports. Um, my stepfather is like a fanatic, and um, but not me. Like I obviously love the Red Sox, the Patriots, blah blah blah. But um, now um. You know, now that I'm not there no more, I don't know. Like, uh, Kansas City looks good, man. Like, there's other <laughs> cities that, that, that look good. You know, San Francisco looked great. Um, so, like, you know, I'm I'm more open now than, than I was um, when I was actually living there. Because uh, if you live in Boston and you, you got walk around with a Yankees hat <laughs> or something, you, you're going to get pummeled. Fair enough, dude. That's funny. Yep. That's funny. Um do you have any fun like you know do you do you plan on uh, going to any events this year maybe like you know oklahoma yeah. festival or something like that yeah so um i'll be at the oklahoma um mushroom festival yeah um yeah i'll be there well i'll um, see you then but yeah I'll, I'll be there i'll also be at um the uh psychedelic conference in jamaica um, the, the one that Oakland High is doing, okay. um, and there's some others, uh, that are there. It just depends on scheduling and stuff. Um, but definitely Oklahoma mushroom festival and that other one, I'll be there cause I already promised them that I would be, um, cause I couldn't make it last year to what they were doing. So I told them this year for sure. Um, so I'll definitely be there. That's cool, man. It's cool. Like the, you know, it's cool that everybody 
Uh, it's actually starting to come out to more events or people are, you know, starting to show up in person and um, do the whole shebang. Man, I learned early on that I had to turn my phone down because in like my episode with the meddling mushroom, I freaking, my phone went off um, so much. He was like, bro, the point where like I took it and I threw it across the room. But then it was just going <laughs> off at the other side of the room. <laughs> yeah, no, exactly. No, I, I usually do. I completely forgot. Um, but It's all good. Yeah, man. Um, but yeah, and then I also have my own event in October in Costa Rica, um, Triple Ween. Um, the Triple Ween. I, still have I yet keep to telling come you, you have life. to come out. I keep telling you, man. This year it's going to be in Costa Rica. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be a blast, man. When is oh, so yeah well, obviously triple ween is Halloween so is that like yeah. the it's four is a four day event right uh yeah so it changes so this year it's from October second to October sixth um but it's always in October um and it's in different locations last year we was in Florida uh we did like Universal Halloween Horror Nights VIPs like in, with security and like no lines all that we went air boating um we did a whole bunch of shit um. And this year, it's in Costa Rica. We rented a private yacht. Uh, we're going to be going out to Tortuga Island. Uh, we're going to be snorkeling. We're going to be going to Arenal Volcanoes to go in the hot springs. We're going to be doing all different types. We're going to be doing um, a macro dose under the Costa Rican stars. We rented out a private resort, and it's just TTF members. Um, so it, it, we have chefs and concierge, and it's a, it's a full-on thing. It's big. Gosh, you know, it sounds like it's pretty, I just got my passport, man. Um, you, you know, I missed the Florida one, but I feel like Costa Rica's, uh, <laughs> October 2nd to October 6th, brother. Well, we'll talk more about that for yeah. sure, man. Yeah. Um, cool. Well, you know, we could all find you, you, you must have a website, right? Uh, no, so, no, no. So I, well, I do. Um, so you could go to tripteamfamily.com, um, and there's links there. Um, but I don't run that, that website or anything. So like, it's not like you could contact like me okay. through there. Um, but you could go to tripteamfamily.com, um, and you could find links to like my Patreon and Instagram and all that, but really Willie's world on YouTube and Patreon slash Willie Michael is the biggest thing. Um, and then on Instagram, it's just TTF underscore Willie. Um, don't be fooled by impersonators and fake people pretending to, to be me because it happens all the time. There's so many of them out there. I'm going to have all like the real true links and descriptions to all the accounts on the, the video description that's posted on you know Spotify and YouTube and any other social media. So, you know, yeah. you, you'll be sure to know that these are the true links that you can find, man. Yeah. Um, look, man, I just want to say one thing before we cut out. Cool. Um, I'm chilling. I just kind of wanted to like, kind of just say that, you know, we can yeah. talk. Uh, but yeah, no, I just want to say one thing, brother. Um, look, shout out to the trip team family all the supporters. I love you guys. Um, thank you guys for making this community so great. Um, even if you're not part of the trip team family, just being part of this community and, and contributing. And I love you guys. You guys mean the world to me. I put you guys above myself, just as I'm sure our brother Fung Strait does too. Um, you know, I, I'll go hungry before I let the trip team family member go hungry. And that's just the way it is. Um, be kind to one another. Be patient. You know, don't shut people down for asking questions if they're trying to learn or get impatient with people. Um, everybody got to start somewhere. And just thank you guys for making this community so great. Yeah, thank you for that. You know, and it's true. His trip team family is a really great community of people. It's a large community of people who are interested in all of the things. Um, and when I say all of the things, as I say, like, I've been past couple of episodes talking about this community as a whole and the community as a whole is interested in more than one thing it's no longer just a mushroom community you know with the entheogen expo that adds like the psychedelic cacti and plants into it and then there's people who are gardening peppers and there's people who are guard you know do you know 
poppies and all the shebangs. Um, so it's like there's a person for pretty much any kind of like you know fun plant growth in the tryptophan team family. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Our, our chat, our Discord is is massive, um, and we got experts in there from all areas, um, other than myself. Like, man, we got expert chemists and expert mycologists, yeah, everything, and cannabis anything that you could really like. Like, so if you join that that our Discord, it's like its own world. It's crazy, bro. We do movie nights where we're all just sitting there watching a movie all together and talking. Like, it's the coolest shit. You're hanging out with. 20 30 40 50 of your best friends just watching a movie and anybody could join in on that um i'm in there every day you could ask me questions you could set up one-on-one -on -one phone calls um we have a marketplace where you could buy sell and trade genetics and all different types of stuff um so yeah come join us on discord you can get access to it through my patreon um and that plus a whole bunch of other things and funk straight I, your Discord's great too. I, I, I know, like, we. we Thanks, I, I man. Was... Honestly, I'm slacking on my Discord. Uh, yeah. Philadelic actually helped me out with my Discord yeah, he, a long see? time ago. Philly, man, I'm telling you, Philly's you great, know, man. He was the, the, the. I actually, he's a moderator of my Discord. Um, and he actually, you know, set it up to the point where it looks official. Uh, but it's yeah. it's been pretty much dead for a long time. I don't. I need to get back on that. I just have been like so uh you know take you want, it up with I, I, I gotta tell you a, i'll tell you a funny story in a second about discord i'm gonna you're gonna die when you hear this shit Hold I, on. I gotta i gotta i gotta put i gotta put my phone uh my computer on the charger so i'm just walking i'm just walking inside real quick yeah all right just give me one second cool give me a second Cool. Let me just uh. Cool beans, man. Cool, brother. All right, real quick before we go, because I think you'll think this is funny. So yeah. All right. So when Discord first started, really like and became a thing, it was during my first Willie Michael channel. Um, and I started a discord for free and I would just put the link in the description of my videos and I just started it. And I had like one moderator on there that I met through the discord, like, and he was super helpful, good kid. Um, but I didn't really know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't know what I was yeah. doing. I just thought like having a discord would be a cool extra feature for the people watching my videos. That's what I did. Uh, yeah. So, but I didn't, it, it isn't how my discord is now. So I created that one discord and then what ended up happening was my channel, the original Willie Michael channel got shut down and that discord, I completely forgot all about. I forgot all about that discord. I didn't go on that discord for years. And then all of a sudden I get them. And now my new discord was set up and it's official. I have a full team of people on there. It's all organized. It's mm -hmm. legit. But my first one wasn't. Um, and I get a message on Instagram from some random person uh, that's a supporter. And they're like, Willie, how the f, f can you allow people to sell Xanax on your Discord openly? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking? What are you talking about? <clears throat> so I'm like, can you send me a picture? Because I don't see anything like this. Where are you seeing this? And they sent me a screenshot. And I'm like, what the hell? Who is this? So I searched the member. And I'm like, this member isn't in my discord i'm like i don't know what what you're talking yeah. about i went back to and i re remembered i'm like oh my god the first discord i set up i never shut it down i never did anything i went back the shit had like 70 something thousand members in oh, the discord shit. and it was the wild wild west there was people selling it was like an open air market of people just because i haven't went on in years so I reach out to the old moderator and he's like, dude, it got so crazy and I couldn't get in touch with you. I just left. So the thing was left to its own devices and it just, it got massive and it became yeah. the worst place ever. Like that turned the into worst like a place. black market, <laughs> a huge, a massive black market. And it's under my name because I'm the one that set up that's that. Discord. Not good. So, 
Yeah, so I went in that very minute when I realized what was going on and where this was coming from. I explained it to the person. I'm like, dude, that's a Discord I created a long time ago. I forgot all about it. Haven't logged in in years. I logged in and I deleted the Discord. I, I deactivated it. I shut it down, like within seconds. Nice. Um, but just goes to show, make sure you guys, if you create something, that you guys are at least monitoring it, watching what's going on, even if it becomes its own thing and it's like kind of just organically operating. If your name's tied to it and people will start doing stuff, like say people are selling firearms or some crazy shit on your Discord and it's under yeah. your name, you're going to get hemmed up for that. You're going to get in trouble for that. So so make sure you you keep an eye on everything you create when it, as far 100%. as it comes to something like that. And don't allow, you know, also keep an eye on just people, you know, quickly before we finish off, keep an eye on people just making fake accounts under your name, um, you yeah. know. There's not really much you could do a lot of the times, but just at least be aware. Yeah, you um, can't. I mean, if somebody creates a fake Willie Michael Patreon, I could have it shut down in a second. But as far as like Instagram and stuff like that goes, um, they don't care. They yeah. they don't care. Well, dude, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, brother. It's been um, really great talking to you, and it's been cool just hearing your stories uh, inside and outside of Michael, bro. Yeah, man, it was fun. Uh, we got to talk about some other things that necessarily don't have stuff to do with Michael, just other things and stuff. So it was a fun conversation. Like I said, just kind of kicking it back and with you and, and talking. Yeah, you know, friends. for the most part, it was just you and I just kicking it back, getting like, you know, just uh, catching up on life. And uh, I'd love to have you on again. I don't want this to be like a one-time yeah. deal. Anytime, brother. My, look. If I could do it, I'm there, brother. You just let me know, especially if the if the viewers and listeners of the show want me back on. I'll come back on. We could tell some more stories. Oh, they're going to be stoked to have you on, bro. I already know. Yeah, man. But, you know, thank you so much, man. You have a nice rest of your day. You too, my and brother. And I'll, uh, you know, catch you on the flip side, bud. Absolutely, my brother. All right. Later. All right. Later, bro. Thank you so much, man. Peace.